Hi, my name is Jesse Anderson, and in this screencast, I'm going to show you a little bit about Apache Beam and how to run Apache Beam across multiple execution engines or runners. To start off with, I'm not going to delve deeply into the code. Suffice it to say, this is the simple word count that we've come to know and love with big data. So what we're going to do is we're going to read in some data here in the, in the main. We're going to count the words, then we're going to write those out. So what's key here is, as you can see, the API is not Spark API, it's not a Flink API. We're using Apache Beam here. What will be really interesting is that we're going to run this same code on two different execution engines. We're going to see how we can run this on Spark, and then we're going to see how we can run this on Google Dataflow. So we're going to start off with Spark. And as we can see, here's our Spark submit, just like we've come to know and love with Spark. But we're, what we're going to do is we're going to use the Spark runner and we're going to execute the example that we have there. As, as we just saw in the previous, in the, in the atom there, we're going to run org Apache beam examples word count. So that same thing that we were just running and we're going to run that with our local Spark master. So let's go ahead and hit enter and that's going to execute this. And I didn't point out specifically, but we're going to run word count on King Lear. And the output is going to go into HDFS under the out directory in HDFS. So here we have Spark booting up and starting to run. And starting to run and go through all its thing and it's done. All right, let's take a look and see what we have here. So we have Hadoop FS minus LS, and just to remember the directory that we wanted to see, it was called out. So there we have our, excuse me, not our directory, our file. And so let's take a quick peek at that file. And so we'll do Hadoop FS minus tail, and that file's name is out dash zero 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 of dash zero. 0001 and we can tail that out as we can see we're running some word counts on that here's how many times each one of those words has appeared okay so as you remember that was the code this code right here this is the Apache beam code was running there on spark so once again we saw that with our spark submit okay now what's really interesting is we're going to run this same execution and the same code on Google Dataflow. So Google Dataflow is another Spark-like uh, execution engine that we have. So here we are in a different tab that I have. And in this one, we're going to run the same org Apache Beam examples word count. And this time we're going to use the, the blocking Dataflow pipeline runner. What that means is before we were using a runner for Spark, now we're going to use the Dataflow runner. Same exact code behind the scenes, just a different runner. So let's go ahead and hit execute on this. And while that's running, um, for my sanity's sake, I just using the Maven ex execute there. Uh, part of the things that we're dealing with here, we're specifying some arguments. So those arguments that we saw before, the project ID and that sort of thing, those didn't appear in Spark. So what we're having to do is put in some specific arguments that we need for the Google data flow side of things. So here we have scientific error, that's my project ID. Uh, here we have our staging location. This is where we're going to stage that data. As you can see, we're uploading the files that we need to run these Java files up to the staging area. Then when we actually get to the output, those are going to go into the Google storage. It's going to go into the scientific error bucket into the output directory there. So here we are, we've started to run the job. This job is going to be submitted for us by run. it's going to run the G Cloud in the background. I didn't point that out specifically, but I've actually run the setup for the Google Cloud and made sure that it had permissions and all that fun stuff before I ran this. That's something that you will have to do yourself if you try out this. 
Here we're starting to see that we're running some workers, so we're starting three workers. Now, as you can see, this is executing. So now let's go to, here we are in the storage. As you can see, I have my scientific air bucket and there's King Lear, that's the da data that we're going to process. We've uploaded that data into the storage, but now let's actually go into this and look at the data flow. Here we have a data flow that's running that we've, that we've submitted from the VM. And as you can see, it's running. It's actually going through this data. So here we have the workers have started successfully. Now things are actually going to start running and running through that data. As you can see, it's starting to go through and execute the operations that we need. Once again, all of this code is coming from the same, same data, same, same code. Now we finish things and it's going to start, uh, it's going to finish up our and stop our worker pool. As you can see, all of this succeeded. Now let's go into our data storage. Here we have our bucket and here we have our output. So let's just take a quick look at one of these outputs. As you can see, it's doing word count for us. As we come back over here to the actual program, it's going to take a second for the workers to stop. Uh, this is obviously a small amount of data. Normally the startup times would, would be amortized across many different or a, a much larger data set than this. So as we can see here, the job is actually done, it's finished, and it's giving us the job status of done, it's cleaning up anything that may have, have done, and now we can start working with this, and we've seen that everything is run for us. Once again, all of the code was the same. Here's our code once more. We ran that code both on, on Apache Spark, I didn't point it out specifically, but we could have run this locally just as a regular Java main. We ran it in Google Dataflow up on the cloud. Another option that we could have done was on Apache Flink. And with that, I'd like to wish you the best of luck as you start to learn Apache Beam.